By this time, you may have seen practically every 2080 and 2080 Ti out there on the market, but here we've got the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti. And what sets this apart from a Zeus or MSI, for instance? Well, this one I'm told is going to be coming in at MSRP. So you're not gonna be paying any premiums, unlike the Strix, where you were paying a premium, but you were getting a beefed up PCB, a much bigger cooler, and that was practically taking up three slots. However, Gigabyte haven't skimped out on really anything here, which is the good news. They've got a two and a half slot cooler, and the good thing is about this cooler is, and I'll pull up the noise and temps results for you guys already, is that this thing is doing a great job of handling all the heat output that the RTX 2080 Ti can put out. And to this date, I think this is one of the most powerful and also power consuming cards out there on the market. Of course, what else may differ this card from the competitors' cards? Let's take a look. Welcome back to Tech Yesterday, and here it is, Gigabyte's edition of the 2080 Ti. Features three 82mm fans, and it's practically the same cooler, which is two and a half slot, that went on their 2080. This cooler as well handled the Ti without any problems at all, and the good thing is at 60% fan speeds, the noise is pretty low, and the temperatures are going to remain low too. Though when you do leave the fans on auto, something interesting about this card was that it actually ramped up the fan speeds a little bit higher than that of 60%, but the temperatures still creeped up a little bit higher too. And that has to do with PWM control constantly fluctuating. And so it looks like it wants to sit at around 70 degrees. And the ambient conditions in here were about 23 degrees C. Uh, though that aside, let's take a look at some gaming results for you guys. And the first one here we'll pull up is Far Cry 5. And what happened in this benchmark was kind of interesting in ways because we saw that the 2080 Ti from Gigabyte was performing pretty much neck and neck with the Strix ROG 2080 Ti. And so this was on a test bed with a 7820X at 4.5 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of memory, DDR4 clocked to 3200 megahertz. And as we're going through the 4K, the results were pretty much neck and neck. And one thing I'll quickly pull up now is the overclocking results. This here did show higher overclocks than the ROG Strix. And now that does come down to silicon lottery, but the interesting thing is, this only has a power limit of 11% extra. So you get 111% maximum power limit, and the ROG Strix, for example, had 125%. So you do get that extra power limit, and that did show in the power consumption tests, where this was, I think, being limited by that power limit. So if we upped that for 25%, this may have indeed beat the ROG Strix, which may have not been as well as a Silicon Lottery winner as this was. Uh, so going through the Time Spy results showed that it was pretty much performing neck and neck with that of the ROG version, but also beating out the 2080 and also the 1080 Ti by a big chunk. And then moving over to 3D Mark Firestrike, which is more of a 1080p benchmark, but we can still see that in older titles, there's not gonna be a huge difference between the 1080 Ti and the 2080, for example, and the 2080 Ti isn't going to pull that far ahead. So what I've done here with my testing and what I'm going to do more research on is I think games that originated from DX9 with simpler effects, for example, you won't see that big of a margin between the 1080 Ti and the 2080 Ti, and even the 2080, for example. And you'll see the 1080 Ti even beating the 2080 in some of those titles. But when it comes to games that were released in 2018, for example, that's when the 2080 Ti and also the 2080 start to pull ahead of the 1080 Ti. So that's something that I've sort of seen a correlation with the, some of the games that I'm testing here. World of Warcraft will pull up this for you guys, 2880p. Now this is a ridiculous resolution, but at this resolution, maximum settings, I was able to properly stress all the graphics cards here in the Tech Yes Studio. And what we found was the 2080 Ti from Gigabyte was pretty much neck and neck again with the ROG, both overclocked, but at stock settings, the ROG card was pulling ahead by a little bit. I guess that has to do with the massive oversized cooler on the ROG itself. But now moving over to Crisis 3 and 4K results here showed that this was just uh, falling behind a little bit behind the ROG in this title. And I know Crisis 3 from experience does chew up a lot of power. It's a very, uh, how would you call it, power supply hungry game, both maxing that of the CPU and the GPU in a lot of occasions. But moving over to 4K showed these same results continuing from 1440p. So the ROG does have its advantages. And in certain titles that I guess utilize all the GPU itself, that's when you'll see that extra power limit when it comes to overclocks pulling ahead. Moving over to Scum, this showed pretty much a neck and neck race between both these TI models at 1440p. 
also pulling ahead of the 2080 and 1080 Ti by a comfortable margin. And then following that to 4K, we saw similar results yet again. And then onto Destiny 2, both 1440p and 4K results show that the TI models were pulling ahead. The ROG just ever so slightly ahead, even though the Gigabyte variant did score higher overclocks in general. And I'll quickly pull up the maximum clocks obtained here in stress tests that were passable on this Gigabyte model. And what we got here was an extra 188 megahertz on the core clock itself. And then on the memory, I was able to just max the slider with a thousand megahertz. I was quite shocked at how far the memory could go and I didn't get any crashing. But again, I do have to sort of bring that back to the power limit here, especially in time spike extreme where the ROG had lower clocks, but it was still scoring pretty much the same results in that particular benchmark regardless of the clock speeds. But this little behemoth here looks like it did win the Silicon Lottery. And moving over to PUBG really showed the 2080 Ti flexing yet again over its younger brother, the 2080, and also the 1080 Ti, scoring well into the mid 100s in FPS at 1440p high settings. Moving over to 4K high settings showed similar results with both the Ti big brothers flexing over the younger brother and the previous flagship. Pulling up here the Final Fantasy 15 demo, which supposedly has DLSS enabled. This showed some massive gains over that of both the 2080 and 1080 Ti yet again, though on that note of DLSS and also ray tracing, I will have to point this out just like I'm pointing out every time we talk about RTX series, which the R stands for ray tracing and they hyped up all these new technologies. Uh, until they give us something that's properly playable and it's not even beta, it's actually in games implemented, then we can start to hype that up and experience it and judge it. But until then, it's really a letdown in my opinion because the RTX really doesn't stand for anything at the moment. I think of this card more of a GTX card than an RTX card because what we're showing you guys here is really all we can show you and that is raw gaming performance, yet I really would love to see some of these extra eye candy features and also DLSS, for example, which is supposedly enabling better frame rates, but also better eye candy as well. Though keep in mind when I'm watching back this Final Fantasy 15 demo, I'm not really seeing a huge improvement to my eyes. The Star Wars Reflection demo shows the 2080 and the 2080 Ti performing neck and neck here because the benchmark's capped at 24 FPS. And so there it all is on the table with the Gigabyte 2080 Ti. This card is really nice. It feels nice in the hands. It weighs exactly the same as the 2080 model that we had come through here. So it is using the same cooler. It is two and a half slot and it will do an absolutely fine job of keeping this card under wraps. I do think Gigabyte are really getting it right in the 2000 series. You've got a card that looks clean, it performs well, and the best thing is they include a four year warranty, at least for the people down under here in Australia. You've also got RGB on the side of the card, which you can change to any color via the Gigabyte software. And for inputs and outputs, you've got three display port outs and also a HDMI 2.0 and a USB type C if you wish to utilize that technology. On the side here, you've got support for NVIDIA's new technology of bridging two video cards together, and that's NVLink, which is the successor to SLI. And really, when it all comes down to it, that's about it with the RTX 2080 Ti. You're going to be paying a premium, as I've said in the previous reviews that I've done on these cards. But with the 2080 Ti in particular, you are going to get a premium experience. It does beat out the 1080 Ti by a healthy margin, does beat out the 2080, by a healthy margin too. And in my opinion, when I reviewed the 2080, I liked what the board partners are doing with the cards. They're doing a great job of implementing good coolers, great aesthetics, but I feel like they've been let down a little bit with the 2080 from NVIDIA. 2080 Ti, however, is that beefed up option. It is the one for the people who want the best and they don't even wanna think about buying a 1080 Ti. They know they want the max performance. They know they wanna max those sliders at ultra settings, either 1440p ultra wide or 4K and they're going to get the best experience possible. Of course, you are going to be paying for it. Frames per dollar isn't really there, but also on the same token, flagship performance never has been about value for money. The mid-range cards like the 2070, I'm sure they'll be hitting sometime next month. So maybe they hopefully will bring some better value than the 10 series predecessors. And I'm looking forward to taking a look at one of those for you guys. But ultimately what this review boils down to is this card right here and have Gigabyte done a good job of making a good cooler and also implementing all the features to really extract the most out of a 2080 Ti. And in my opinion, 
yes, they've done a really good job. They've also included a four year warranty, which is pretty damn huge, especially for a car that's going to be coming in at MSRP. They've included all the options that I would want from an RTX 2080 Ti personally. And that's about all there is really to it. If you guys enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about Gigabyte's new 2000 series coolers and the aesthetics. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. When the 1080 Ti may even beat the uh, This showed massive gain. This showed massive gains. I've been moving now. Over and so here it all is with our little friend here on the table from Gigabyte. Uh, this really doesn't have a name. It's just the Gigabyte.